Hello friends, welcome back to True Abstractive. In this video, we are going to be discussing about what is a causal signal, a non-causal signal, and anti-causal signal. Now, let's start with the first one. The first one is a causal signal. What are causal signal? Causal signal are signals with zero value for all negative time. Zero value. Zero value for all negative time. What does that simply mean? It means that on the negative axis or of time axis doesn't have a value. Now, the causal signal can be discrete or continuous. If it is continuous, like in this case, x of t, which is a continuous signal, does not have a value in the negative axis, right? So, which means for t less than zero, its value is zero, right? So, that's causal signal. It only has value in positive axis, right? So you can define it in two ways. It's either you say it is a signal with zero value for all negative time or a signal with value for all positive time, as you can see in this case. Now, this is for continuous. What if it is discrete? In the case of it being discrete, instead of going to, instead of we writing x of t, we write x of n. And if we write x of n, it is n less than zero. And as it is n less than zero, kind of same with it it always has value of what in the positive axis right and as we are looking at this signal example of um, a discrete time casual sequence is what is a unit step we discussed previously in our video about unit step signal and the importance of impulse response and as you can see a unit step is also called as if side function it is denoted as u of t it has a value from what um a value of one for t greater than or equal to zero in other side it doesn't have a value right and one of the use cases as we explained in the previous video is that when you mix it up with a signal what happens is that you truncate the signal it doesn't have a value in the negative axis except in what in the positive axis that's the same thing here this is an example of what a discrete signal and um, um, a discrete time casual sequence let's look at another type of signal which is anti-causal anti-causal signals right this is a signal with zero value for all positive time. I want to be to be very careful with this. We are going to talk about non-causal, right? Non-causal is not the one with zero value for all positive time. Like kind of you say, okay, if causal is a, a signal with zero value for all negative time, the non-causal should be a signal with zero value for all positive time, or in other words, right? No. It is different and it's kind of confusing. We need to understand this concept. The anti-causal signal are the signals with zero value for all positive time. Right? So it doesn't have uh, value in the positive region. It is the opposite of causal. Non-causal is not the opposite. You get the point? Anti-causal are signals with zero value for all positive time. Or we can define it again that anti-causal signal are signal with value in the negative time axis. Right? For continuous, here's the way it looks like. If it is discrete, here's the way it is going to be. Right? Let's look at the last type of signal. Which is what? Non-causal. Right? This non-causal signal a signal with non-zero value for both positive and negative time, uh, time axis. That simply means that it has value both in the positive and the negative axis. As you can see, for the continuous time signal, it has in the negative and also in the positive. Right? For discrete, let's use an impulse signal mix. You see, it has a constant amplitude. Right? So, the basic overview of this signal is that the causal is the one with zero value for all negative time. Which means on the negative axis, it does not have a value. For anti-causal is the opposite of causal. It simply means that it is a signal with zero value for all positive time. So the opposite of causal is anti-causal. Non-causal isn't the opposite of causal. Non-causal are signals that what have value in both what axis. It's just like joining causal and non-causal. Look at this. Let's take the causal. You know, the causal is like this. Let's take the anti-causal. It is like this. So if you join them together intuitively we have something like this so causal and anti-causal when you combine and give you non-causal that doesn't work in real life it's just a conceptual way of you understanding it you get the point now let's look at example of signals and if you can define if they are causal anti-causal or what 
non causal right so we see the say we should check if they are non causal anti causal or what causal let's look at the first signal the first signal x of t because it is x of t it simply means that what it is a continuous word time signal and it has the e u of t a e raised to the power of 2t which is an exponential and what u of t minus 3 we could remember that u of t minus 3 is a signal right u of t is a signal which has a value of this right as we explained you get the point so when we say u of t minus 3 it simply means that we are shifting the signal forward by unit of 3 because we know that u of t is defined by this with a magnitude of 1 so if it is u of t minus 3 we shift it by a factor of 3 now i want to be very wary and i'm going to make a video about this concept sometimes people used to get confused thinking that if we have minus here we should what go back or if you have plus we should come from no the way this work is counterintuitive to the way we think that is why something signal system is quite complex but there's something you need to understand here when you have negative something it simply means you are shifting forward you are you are you are delaying the signal right if you shift backward you are advancing it kind of uh, i hope i'm not confusing you but what i want you to understand here is that when you have minus it simply means you are what moving forward if let's say it is u of t plus 3 what is going to happen is that you can't 1 2 3 you shift it by factor of 3 or you have something like this you get the point so in this case since we are shifting by factor of 3 we shifted it this way right remember exponential is if it is positive it is growing why isn't it and if it is positive it is growing not decaying when you mix it with something like this every value on the negative axis get cancelled get deleted at the end of the day we only have value on the positive on this side what is the signal that exists for only the positive axis in other words the signal uh, a signal with a um a zero value on the negative axis that's causa look at the definition of causa a signal with zero value so on the negative it has a value of zero look at this it has a value of zero which means what this signal is what is causal it is a causal signal am i right let's look at the next example maybe things will get clear we know for sure that cos 3t is a sign signal right that exists for both positive and negative axis right am i right and u of t is a signal with this magnitude of one am i right so if you mix these two signals together what is going to happen the negative axis get truncated with this and we really have value on the positive axis only we kind of have something like this now if we do, do not have a value on the negative axis and we have value on the positive axis that's also what causal right let's look at the third one the third one here is 5u of negative t we know u is a unit step we have defined that previously so let's catch u of t first right then let's catch u of 5t um 5u of t which means instead of one we have a magnitude of five now let's catch 5u of negative t it simply means that we are reversing it to look at this side what happened it turns out that we have value on the negative axis and a non a zero value on the positive axis right we have zero value what type of signal is that if we look at it very well we can see that what anti-causal is the one with zero value for all positive time and it is having a value in the what negative axis look at this we are having a value in the negative axis zero in the positive axis that simply means what it is what anti-causal you get the point 
<laughs> okay, let's look at the fourth example. This one is a discrete. Let's look at it the same way. You look at this. We sketch it out. U of t is defined for this, isn't it? And if u of t is defined for this, what is going to happen? It is also what? Causal. Hope you are getting the concept. Let's look at this. We won't waste much time. We increase the amplitude first. Wood becomes 2. And what? This is what? U of n. Let's now do 2u of n minus 1. Meaning we are reversing it. What happens? Right? It simply means that the signal is what? Anti-causal. Am I right? Look at this very well. It simply means the signal is what? Anti-causal. Because we, we first of all draw 2u of n with a magnitude of 2. Then we reverse it. And we see as we reverse it, we are having value on the word negative axis, which is what? Anti-causal. Let's look at this. X of sine 70. We know that a sine signal is defined for what? Both positive and negative axis. Right? This is sine of 70. Or like this. So if it is having value for both positive axis and negative axis, right? What kind of signal is that? I think we discussed about that. And third kind of signal is called non causal so this signal is what non causal so the last example will be left for you and i would like you to give a response or to the answer in the comment section below cheers hope we find the video useful if there's any question feel free to ask thanks